crucial moment of this test series between England and Australia, the third day at Trent Bridge, with the second new ball due for the Australians, Thompson, Pascoe and Walker, and the overnight not out batsmen, Alan Knott and Geoffrey Boycott, who'd shared that marvellous partnership yesterday, both of them not out in their 80s, and the England total at 242 for five. The Australians had to get a quick break through. Here's Len Pascoe bowling the first over, and Geoffrey Boycott is the batsman. Shot, confident start by Boycott, no great pace in that. A little bit of a loosener, he's hammered it away to uh, just nudge England into the lead and take his own score on to 92. two overs, not quite, I don't think, where he intended to go, but it fairly raced away down to that Radcliffe Road stand. That brings up the 250. Oh. Well, there's a drop there. And it looks as though somebody might have taken a nasty knock there. David Hook slowly getting to his feet. Again, that went very, very quickly, but uh, Hooks, who taken a brilliant catch earlier on to get rid of Brearley. Letting off boycott there. All lifting, moving away. And David Hooks grabbing hold of it to the right, not able to keep it in his hands. <laughs> he wanted it, and boycott quite right to send it back. would really have been a suicidal run. Almost see a few beads of sweat there on the uh, Knott's face, and that's something most unusual. A little bit of pressure here again. He's never made a hundred against Australia in this country. Has done it overseas. He's on 99 as not as uh, Thompson comes in. That's away. Stared it nicely down to third man. That's a single that he's been after. This crowd rise on their feet to applaud. Superb performance by Alan Knott. First hundred in this country against Australia. It's come in the remarkably quick time under these conditions of 202 minutes. We've got one five and 12 fours. Well, he got down to congratulate him and how he deserves the congratulations here of everybody. It's his 500 in uh, Test Match Cricket. His second against Australia, following on the 106 he made at Adelaide a couple of years ago. And boycott to receive from Thompson. Shot. He's running the first hard, he'll want the second, he's turning swiftly, he's racing in and he's just made it. And his arms go up in the air, his back go up in the air, and there is no more delighted man in England at this particular moment than Boycott. Really has been a tremendous comeback. He's emphasised what he's said all along, that he's a test match player of my word. He's proved he's a test match batsman here on this ground. A marathon effort from the Yorkshireman. Six hours and 20 minutes it's taken to reach 100. He's made 11 fours and he's been largely responsible for seeing England through to a very handy and comfortable lead. Safe and four runs. And that's the 200 up uh, for this pair. Really a tremendous effort from Alan Knott and Jeff Boycott. The stand coming up in 233 minutes. That's pretty good time. <laughs> well, that's it. He's come up with Rick McCosker, who dropped Boycott and has now caught him. And Jeff Thompson has broken through. Boycott out for 107. 297 for six, England. 
and Boycott and Knott have equaled, but not beaten, that previous record partnership of 215 between Hutton and Hardstaff at the Oval in 1938. And Geoffrey Boycott is receiving a magnificent ovation, as well he might. He battled through a very sticky period early on. Had Alan not come in to help him, and has gone through to the third morning of the match now before being dismissed, Court McCosker, Bold Thompson for 107. Ian Botham, man taking his place and he's been padded up a long time in there. A young fellow who made such a great bowling debut, 5 for 74 in 20 overs, 5 maidens in Australia's innings of 243. So it's 297 now for the loss of 6 wickets and that's how the sixth wicket went down. Thompson just getting it to move away a little bit. Boycott wasn't quite there. And McCosker clung onto it this time. Diving away to his right. And Greg Chappell at first slip has his head down, but I'll bet he was smiling by comparison with uh, what he was saying when the chance was dropped originally at 20. to build them. Well, that's Edge and he's dropped. And Greg Chappell in despair there. Sort of catch that you could guarantee cling hold of 99 times out of 100. Not a difficult one as far as slip catches go. The outside edge of Botham's bat going in at a nice comfortable height. And that's a very fortunate let off for Ian Botham. Despite uh, for Ian Botham as a non striker to settle in and get used to this atmosphere. And it really is a wonderful atmosphere here today. He's got it through this time. That should go through for four. So, another very pleasant cover drive by Alan Knott. See again this boundary which brings up the 300. There's a full toss which is dealt with this time on the onside. It's four more, clipped away, and uh, all kinds of records fall into Alan Knott in this innings now. He's now established himself as the uh, high scorer. High score, in fact, by a wicketkeeper in England, Australia, Test match cricket. That's for either country. 120 was the previous best, made by Leslie Ames at Lords against Australia, 1934. And uh, Rodney Marsh, of course, made that very good 110 undefeated at uh, Melbourne in the centenary test. And that's the only 100 by an Australian keeper against England. And Thompson comes in again. And he's hit him high and high. Right over the top. In fact, only a couple of bounces to the ropes, right over the top of it off. Thompson can't believe it. It's very, very seldom he gets treated in such a cavalier fashion as that. So he's taken 14 from that uh, Jeff Thompson over. And my word, this is a fine innings. He moves on now to 129 at the end of Jeff Thompson's very expensive over. Boy got 107 taken by Thompson and Thompson finished that uh, pre-lunch session with two for 85. Here he is now bowling to Alan Knott. Oh, what a good catch. First ball after lunch. One of the most extraordinary dismissals I've seen. Alan Knott is out. First ball after lunch to what was so close to being a wide would well have been worthwhile letting it go got a top edge and was caught at third man and very well caught indeed by Ian Davis 
Not as out for 135, and it's 326 for seven. That was a long walk out. And now a long walk back for Alan Knott and a standing ovation. Jeff Thompson takes his third wicket. And the Australian players and spectators applauding Knott from the field. Rises to him, 326 for seven now. And that's how it happened. Just look how wide this ball was. Right out at the edge of the return crease. He only just got the bat to it. And there's Ian Davis coming around from third man. He had to run in and he took it very nicely at about knee height. Here's Thompson's second ball after lunch. Bowling now to Botham, the batsman crossed. Oh, no, keeps putting him down from a full toss. Well, what an extraordinary start to the second session. A half pace full toss, and Botham has smashed it away behind point. And O'Keefe, a great effort to get his right hand to it, and the ball didn't stick. Twice Greg Chappell has put down catches and you just don't see that sort of thing from the Australian captain. That was fairly straightforward. I think possibly Marsh started off to come across as Underwood nicked it. He did, in fact. So I suppose you can say that uh, Marsh might have taken Chappell's eye off the ball there. It's a good shot. He's picked it up nicely off his toes. Hit it away over square leg. So Ian Botham with that stroke away over square leg has um, now gone on to 14. Underwood has made seven. It's 346 for seven and the lead is over 100. 103 runs for Australia to chase and they still have uh, three wickets to pick up good shot short delivery and uh, both of them very well with it oh, that was a useful ball good a bowl as uh, delivery as Pascoe's bowl in this spell So Pascoe breaks through, over goes Underwood Stumps, other wicket down, 357 now for eight as Derek Underwood is comprehensively bowled there for seven. This is how Underwood departed, he played through that over pretty well, he had a useful ball the one before but he was beaten there by that uh, extra pace of Len Pascoe. So Walker taking the wicket, it's taken a long time to collect his wicket, he's well deserved this solitary success to date, comes in his 39th over and makes England now 357 with nine men out. Always a chance that the uh, swing of Walker would defeat both of them. This one coming in just a fraction on the inside edge, dragging the ball on. So Botham bowled for 25, 
and to the five wickets he took on the first day makes it a very happy and successful test career start for Ian Botham. That's it. That's a perfect end swinger to the tail ender to finish off the England innings. Max Walker picking up those last two wickets. Hendrick bowl by Walker for a single. And the final total, 364 all out for England. 121 the lead, and uh, that situation, the entire responsibility of Alan Knott and Geoffrey Boycott. 135 to Knott, 107 to Boycott. Uh, Boycott eventually out, caught by the man who let him off at 20, and not out that uh, extraordinary stroke just after lunch, first ball after the interval for 135. Both of them played some very good shots. He's had a good match so far. He's fielded well, apart from batting and bowling well. The Australians, I suppose, could be quite happy in the end with a deficit of only 121. But uh, the bowlers certainly suffered because of drop catches. Pasco, four for 80. At one stage, he could have had four for 19, had that chance of boycott been accepted. Thompson, I thought, bowled pretty well. He bowled within himself today. Three for 103 from 31 overs. And Walker, his usual lion-hearted effort, finishing up, taking two for 79. Well, now, a deficit of 121 is no fun in a test match when you're one down in the series. And McCosker and Davis faced a tremendous responsibility when they came out to bat. We pick up the action now with Bob Willis bowling the third over of the Australian innings and Ian Davis as the batsman. Oh, that's put away nicely by Davis, no third man. So that will drift away for four runs. Just underlining how important it is that this pair get away to a good start as far as Australia is concerned. And that's not the sort of delivery that will uh, add anything to their confidence. It's a real beauty, that one. It's out. Tony Gray. Good sharp catch, and Willis has broken through, and he's bowled extremely well for that wicket. Deserved it thoroughly. He beat Davis early on, and then beat him a second time, hitting him on the shoulder, and now he has him out for nine, and the first Australian wicket is gone in the second innings, with the total on 18. Tony Gregg made no mistake about that, and uh, what a difference between the way that was taken and the Australian catching, where Boycott was put down twice, and then Greg Chappell himself dropped two chances at first slip. And Davis caught Greg Bold Willis for nine. 18 for one, Australia, and that's how it happened, with Tony Gregg taking the sharp chance, low down and slightly to his right-hand side. Four runs. Not off the middle of the bat again. Squirting it away off uh, a thickish edge between the two gullies. Oh, he'll have to go. Oh, that must have been out if he hit the stumps. Both of the man, and that was beautifully fielded. It must have missed the stumps at that far end by a fraction of an inch. That's four runs, very fine, and uh, no chance. It bounced well in front of Alan Knott. Rather a neat leg glance by Greg Chappell. Saw something of a return to form in the first innings here by McCosker. Wasn't in very much trouble at all. Went to a good 50 before he fell to Hendrick, caught it uh, first slip by Brearley. And that's driven firmly again, threw mid on, the ball pitched anywhere around about leg stump, he deals so effectively with. I think that was a definite chance. Uh, both of them was a little slow there in uh, realising the situation. Oh. And he's bowled him. Oh, what a breakthrough. Utterly surprised, great chapel there, really couldn't believe it. Played back to a well-pitched up ball, it didn't get very high, sneaked fairly low along the ground. 
And that's a tremendous blow for England. Disaster for Australia to lose their captain, Great Chapel, who looked in such really good form. So the second wicket going down at 60, and Great Chapel bowled by Hendrick for 27. And to get out Great Chapel for the English side is like disposing of three or four Australians. That's a great morale boost for them to see the back of him disappearing into this pavilion. This is the way Hendrick took the wicket. Fairly well pitched up. And one would thought, really, that Gret Chapel should have been thinking of pushing forward there. And that's a pleasant half volley outside the off stump, which is put away nicely. Boycott is never going to stop that. It races away through extra cover. Mccosker saw that very early on. And he swiveled round and got into position almost as soon as that ball pitched halfway down. There's the man, and he's lost it in the, his son and the crowd in the background. He wouldn't have stopped it anyway. It was going too far to his right. But in fact, Wilmer was moving to the left. And that's David Hook's first boundary. He goes to 12. Mikoska 35. Well, that's a fine shot. No doubt at all that that was going from the four the moment it left the bat. Again, as soon as that's pitched anywhere around like Stamp, Lacoska, very anxious to deal with it, clips that away for two off both and brings up the 100 for Australia. And narrows the difference between the two sides now to 21. So 100 for two with Lacoska on 38 and Hooks on 22 at the end of Botham's ninth over. Beat Greg at mid wicket, nicely forced away off the back foot. That'll rise through and uh, beat Greg through to mid wicket for four runs for David Hooks. So the sequence of maidens broken by David Hooks. Oh, <laughs> I certainly made that one bend, spun quite appreciably. won't be pleased with that demonstration coming from young Ian Botham. Offered no shot, stuck his uh, foot, it hit him uh, just about full toss on the boot. The foot uh, quite a fair distance outside. Uh, and I think possibly that was a fair decision by umpire Constant. Oh, oh, runs there all right. Tossed high, but a little too wide. And cracked away through the covers by Hooks. So these two came together when the score was 60, when Greg Chapel was uh, bowled by Hendrick. And now put together a 50 partnership. Well, after those uh, early disasters, Davis and Chapel disappearing from the scene, there was uh, quite a good partnership between McCosker and Hooks. They certainly didn't advance without any alarms. Uh, Underwood bowling into the rough outside, the off stump for Hooks, and flighting the ball as well as I've ever seen him. There was uh, a danger all the time, and McCosker was solid all the way through. But uh, one of the disquieting things, apart from uh, Underwood's movement, getting a little bit of spin, particularly out of the footmarks, one of the disquieting things was the fact that the occasional ball kept low. Still two days to go. The Australians nine runs in arrears, still with eight wickets in hand, 
and boy, I think they're looking right down the barrel. Cricket on the ESPN Classic. Sponsored by Computeach.